Welcome back. Now in this lesson of factoring, we're going to go ahead and call upon the x again. Uh, I created this little board so we can see this a little more clearly for you guys, but let's go ahead and do the same methods. So here we want to factor, and let's go back to our original video. And I had mentioned that there's no number in front of the x squared or any variable squared right here. So variables, anything like a, b, x, y, k, j, any kind of letter in a sense. Um, you're right, there is a 1 there, but in math we just go ahead and let it be. So when I say that there's no number, I mean there's just nothing in front of the x squared. Whenever we see that, we just call upon the x. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's draw our x. So we like to draw the x, and then we drop down the number. So we'll drop down the negative 12. Perfect. Then we take this number at the end, this is called a constant, and we put that down here. So then we ask ourselves, what multiplies to 35 and adds to negative 12? So we have to come up with two numbers that multiply to 35 and add to negative 12. Well, here's a secret. If this is a positive right here, and let me get another color. I'm going to circle this. If this is a positive and this is a negative, then automatically, I promise you this, these two numbers right here will be a negative. Again, if this is a positive and this is a negative, the two numbers will always be a negative. So now we just have to ask ourselves, what multiplies to 35 and adds to 12? Let's see here. Um, I know that 7 times 5 gives me 35, but what about 7 plus 5? That works too. And I know you're probably saying, but they have to be negatives. Okay, so let's do negative 7 plus negative 5. Negative 7 plus negative 5 gives me negative 12. Negative 7 times negative 5 gives me a positive 35. So these can go here. Perfect. Now, now that we have that, we know that all we have to do is take the square root of this number right here, or of this variable, and that's an x. So I'm going to go make an x here, then I'll do another set of parentheses, and do an x here. Because that's what happens when you're factoring. You're taking it into two binomials. Now, I'm sorry guys, I didn't even fix this right here. Let me go ahead and fix that. I put a 7. We want to go ahead and put a 5 there. So let's put a 5. Sorry about that. Okay, so we have a negative 7 and a negative 5. So these two numbers go inside here. So we'll do x minus 7. Notice how I bring that minus sign there. And I'll do x minus 5. And that's your answer when factoring it. So that's perfect. That's a great example of what we have to do. Uh, to answer a couple more questions, yes, you can go ahead and use the quadratic formula. I don't necessarily recommend it. When you can factor it, it's a little easier. Uh, I've been doing this long enough to know that um, that's something that you only do when it's not factorable, not when it is factorable. You can go ahead and ask your teachers if you'd like. Um, but this is a great method. It definitely helps you out. The hardest part is finding the factors. But once you find that out, you're pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and let, let's just try another one. Um, just so we can make sure to really help you guys out with this. So I'm going to go ahead and erase everything. Um, sorry if you guys hear that. This is It's called a Wacom tablet that I'm using. And uh, it's actually pretty neat. So let's go ahead and try another one. Um, we're going to go ahead and go with a blue color. Okay, so what if we go ahead and have y squared minus 3y minus 40. Again, there's no number in front of the variable, so we just call upon the x. Sorry, you guys should see me. I'm still in my football gear, though, so don't worry. I, I love playing football. But the main thing that we have to do is once we see that there's no number here in front of the variable squared, we just put an x. Putting an x is calling upon the x. After that, we drop down just the number, so we drop down the negative 3 and we take this negative 40 or this minus 440 and we put it right here. Perfect. Great. Now, what do we do from there? Well, it's actually 
pretty easy once we get this. And it may take a while to get used to it, but once you understand it, it's going to be pretty simple from there on out. What you want to do is you just go ahead and find factors of numbers that multiply to 40. Now, right away, and you guys will start seeing this over time, since these are two negatives, one number is going to be a positive and one's going to be a negative. You're asking why? Well, because a positive times a negative will always give you a negative. And when you're foiling it out, because factoring is just doing foil backwards, basically. Um, a positive times a negative will give you a negative. And I'll show you once we get the answer where this comes from. So then we know that one number has to be a positive and one number has to be a negative. Now here's my secret little tip for you that I didn't mention in the last video. Um, I guess I was just too amped up and ready to play football on my football pads. But the main thing that you want to notice, and you, and you really, really, really want to notice this, is that if this number right here is a negative, okay, this is the hint, okay? If that number is a negative, then the bigger number will be the negative. Let me tell you what I mean with this. Okay, let's find our factors of 40. Well, we know 10 times 4 gives us 40. What else gives us 4? 2 times 20 gives us 40. Uh, 8 times 5 gives us 40. So these are the things that you want to do when you're doing this. It seems like a lot more work, but you're not thinking as much. And it's, I tell the students, 100% of the time, this works all the time. So now we know that the bigger number will be the negative. So now we've already eliminated that thought process. So when we're adding, so let's just say negative 10 plus 4, ne uh, 2 plus negative 20. So I'm assigning the negative to all the bigger numbers and negative 8 plus 5. So all I did was just took these factors, check, 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 and I put them right here. Okay, so negative 10 plus 4 gives me a negative 6. So we know it multiplies to 40, but it doesn't add to negative 6. We have to find something that adds to negative 3. Um, 2 plus negative 20 gives me a negative 18. It multiplies to negative 40, but it doesn't add to negative 3. Negative 8 plus 5 gives me negative 3. Oh, wait a minute. That's perfect. Those are the numbers that we want to use. So we want to put a plus 5 here and a negative 8. Why? Because if this is a negative, the bigger number, and I'm not, I'm not saying that negative 8 is bigger than positive 5. I'm just saying the number. Just look at the number without the signs. 8 is bigger than 5, so we put the negative because negative 8 plus 5 gives me my negative 3, and those are the two numbers that we're working with. So now our answer, we take the square root of the y squared, so that's y, and we can do y plus 5, it doesn't matter the order you write it in, I promise you, times y minus 8. That's your answer. Now, to kind of let you know what I was talking about, FOIL is doing first, outer, inner, and your last. Okay, well, this one right here, let me get another color. This one right here, the last, would be negative 5 times a, or positive 5 times a negative 8, which gives me my negative 40. So that's where that comes from. So that's why you can tell if that's a minus sign, one has to be a positive and one has to be a negative, because a negative times a positive is always equal to a negative. That's the key thing that you want to remember. But remember, our answer here when factoring is um, y plus 5 times y minus 8. Check. We got it right. Good job. And remember, call upon the x. I'm going to go ahead and create a video for you, though, to let you know what happens when there is a variable in front of the, or there is a number in front of the variable squared.